Hey everybody, welcome to episode five, episode five already of Jeff Has Cool Friends. I am Jeff and I have cool friends and my cool friend of this episode is a very fantastic and talented comedian, writer, actor, all around multi-hyphenate, former guest of the other show that I don't think I'm legally allowed to say out loud. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Dana Gould. Dana, how you doing, bud? How are you, buddy? Well, I can't even mention. Things get gnarly. Dude, let me tell you. I can't even mention it. This this deal keeps getting worse all the time. Uh, <laughs> Say it, you bugger. Yeah, there's 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 definitely Lando at the end of Cloud City vibes going on uh, <laughs> with that situation. Now, here's... Okay. Here's something I didn't know. And this is the kind of thing that I love. The actor who played Lobot yes. was the same actor that portrayed the never named Ernst Stavro Blofeld in the cold open of For Your Eyes Only. Boom. I, I got one, if you're ready for it. The guy who wow. played Admiral Ozel. Mm-hmm was lucky enough to play Adolf Hitler in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Oh, very good. Very so good. We... And also, the uh, the commander, uh, I think it was the commander of the uh, ADAT. General Veers, yes. It was a general, I believe General Veers, right. General Veers, prepare your troops for a service attack. I believe General Veers was portrayed by Julian Gl glover the the other bad guy from last crusade uh and also julian glover the bad guy also in for your eyes only man we're tying these in so I'm, i'll go i'll go one more uh and then we can actually start Which, our we can right. start the show technically but uh right. Jack i only like i like the james bond movies where roger moore started to run like my dad <laughs> yeah the ones where like you're like does james bond have a bad back it doesn't seem like something he'd have <laughs> He's wearing slacks. Uh, uh, Jack Porkins, the pilot from Red yep. Six. I mean, everybody knows famously poor sure. old, cruelly named Jack Porkins. Yeah, no kidding. Um, also played uh, Detective Eckhart, the crooked cop from Batman 1989. That is true. Now that's absolutely true. That poor guy. You ain't got no future, Jack. I don't think that's, that's true. That was Eckhart. Uh, so Good call. Good if we, call. if we could just pick random sort of and like I love those guys that like, I was in Batman. I was in Empire Strikes Back. That isn't Star Wars. I oh, must be rich. No, 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 no. We got, <laughs> we got screwed pretty bad. We got, <laughs> yeah. uh, not, not even a little. Yeah. There, there, there are, yeah. Like people where you'd be like, I, pl I was on six seasons of Battlestar Galactic. And they were like, you went, there were six seasons of that. They're like, I really could use <laughs> yeah. some money. Yeah. Uh, and you're like, all right, I will take a photo that uh, <laughs> th that happened one time to me at a comic book convention. I uh, was talking to a wrestler. And the next thing I know, I gave him twenty dollars and don't know why. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I was just that like, happened. OK, well, I got I got like three card Monty at an autograph table, essentially. And was like, I guess yeah. I gave you twenty dollars and I don't feel bad about it because often when you often when you meet your heroes, you end up paying their light bill. My, my motto. <laughs> <laughs> one of my one of my favorite convention I'll, i know we're, we're getting so far off the rails already no one this my, is the this is the this show is it. yeah this, this is, is the show i was at uh a, a, a comic book convention in 2004 and i met glenn shaddix sure and glenn shaddix famously i think most famously as otho, otho from, from beetlejuice right. uh and probably the mayor from the nightmare before christmas i think those are right. the two things that Comic Con people would say, right, yeah, yeah. "I love you" in the thing, yeah. and uh, the girl I was with at a time wanted a photo with him, and he's like, "Well, Tim you... Burton, dude." Yes, yeah, he's very Tim Burton, and he's right. also great in Demolition Man. I mean, mm -hmm. He's great in everything, by the way. But uh, he was like, uh, "I'll take a photo, but you got to buy an autograph, and I'll, I'll totally do that." And she only wanted the photo, so I was like, "Well, let me tell you, I love Dunstan checks in, and you were great." as the undercover hotel reviewer from Dunstan checks in the orangutan in the five star hotel movie. And he's like, excuse me. And I was like, if you got one of those, man, I will give you 20 bucks for that right now. And he's like, <sighs> and you just see him like leafing. And he finally pulls out like <laughs> something from like the press kit, sure. you know, like one of those things and, and, and just signs it. And he's like here. And he just gave it to me. And it's still, it's framed like next to my bed. I love it so much. It's my favorite thing on the planet. 
It's so great. So Dana, uh, when last we spoke, a lot has happened. Uh, a whole uh-huh. lot. Uh, a whole lot has happened. When uh, last we spoke on a podcast or when last we spoke in life? Both. But uh, when last we spoke on a podcast was a couple years ago. When last we spoke. Was in, it? I mean, it was uh, 2019. Over a year ago, for sure. Yeah. yeah, it was like 2019. So Yeah, it was, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It was before all the bull. And uh, it sure was. Uh, and then, um, <laughs> but la- when last we spoke uh, specifically was uh, you were taking vaxxed up uh, healthy um, Pilates classes yes. at a house that is literally six doors from my house. Yes. And so uh, I joined with you and it was great. And I had got a great mm-hmm. workout and I got a nice little friction burn on my bum. Indeed. Uh, well, I don't know what happened after we left and that's your business. No, oh, I hey. did a yoga. I did my first yoga class yesterday. Yeah. Since. Uh, the uh pandemic and uh that th- that's my uh that's a great workout for me yeah uh, a hot yoga class is perfect you sweat like a bad um you come close to vomiting but you're never doing one thing long enough to actually vomit and uh at the beginning and then you get better and then uh and then uh you feel like you've done something and you just all i want to do is tone i don't need to build i'm not one of those comedians that thinks you know what would be really funny? Huge muscles. I'm going to say something right now. This is cruel. This is very cruel of I'm you. I'm not to talking say about me. you. No. I'm not uh, talking about you. You I'm know, talking about the whole Austin, Texas <laughs> guys who look like thumbs. No, uh, I, I think know. we all know he who shall not be named. It's fine. Yeah, I get it. And there are a couple, and and it's the belief. You know, it's the lack of understanding that the the key to comedy of being the purveyor is vulnerability it's such an uphill battle for me when i get on stage looking like a cop uh indeed to just be like no but look i suck all the time yeah. i'm the but worst Kenan, person keenan wayans was pretty jacked and he used to go on at the improv in these short sleeve shirts with these giant guns and no one would laugh because Guys didn't want to laugh because they were, felt their women were their dates were like, eh, and they're pissed off. And uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't work. I saw it doesn't the, work for comedy. I I was on a show once with three way 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 in eye, mm-hmm. and way I yeah. Uh, one of the most fascinating things about them was that uh, they I think they were getting back into stand up. This was like you oh, know like great. 2013 or 2014, and um, they certainly seemed like they hadn't performed the material in a while. Cause there was a mm-hmm. lot of stuff where I was like, Oh no, you, you don't want to say that right now. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> even since the pandemic. Yeah. This is not 1988. Like, don't say that. Oh, I can't do that. Uh, but um, they were helping each other from the audience. Like oh, I, I, I remember like Damon was, well, it was great though. It was like fascinating because Damon was talking about like injecting insulin. And then all of a sudden you'd hear Sean Wayans be like, well, what is that? Why do we want it? Why do we need to know? Like he was like, they were working each other. They oh, were well, workshopping at a yeah. comedy club right but it enhanced the experience in a way yeah, that i sure, couldn't yeah it was like a. it was like we were just watching them write an episode of in living color or something right. yeah, it yeah. was it was or the movie white girls white white chicks i saw in the theater i saw white chicks in the theater and i liked it i actually loved that movie could and you make that could you make that? i guess you could make that today Seems like I don't know. There are certain. You couldn't do black chicks, but you could do white chicks. No, I think that's that. That yeah, we probably and I don't think we should do. It's the whole up down. Yeah, punching. we couldn't do black chicks. Yes, I feel like the Wayanses could. I feel like they could probably. Yeah, oh, they could. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's how it works. Here uh, comes Cat Augustin. Uh, Cat Augustin. Uh, I was I was going to bring Cat up, and so I'm so excited to see her. Uh, she is uh, joining on the camera. Unfortunately, this is an audio podcast. Right. Uh, but we have, have to swap over. It's my... it's OK. But um, no yeah, let, we, we can say hi to Kat real quick uh, because she is a delight. Oh, I didn't want to. It's OK. You didn't want to what? I didn't want to. So the world knows I live with a woman. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all deny it. Um, Kat, how are okay, you? Hi, how are you? Can I have your credit card now? I'm going shopping. Sure. I'm just kidding. Um, how cute is your background? It's so cheerful. It's ador- It's This is actually sad. Is it? I mean, it's adorable, but also like from a life perspective, sad. I guess just visually, it, it's it's very organized and colorful and just kind of it is. puts me in a good mood. So the back of my, if, if in case for those of you listening, it is a bookshelf filled with graphic novels and then action figures and just general sadness uh, of my life. 
Um, Kat, you are a, uh, cause I know, uh, this is great. Dana tagged you out real quick. Cause he has to go potty. Um, really? I yeah, think that's... he's getting another, I think he's getting a mic, but baby, I don't, I don't need you to do a, a complete like tech, you know, rigging things because I just wanted to crash your podcast. Cause we're friends and I wanted to be a brat. I would say pod crashing is one of my favorite things. And I love that <laughs> right now, by the way, on the screen, all I can see is Dana's sweater and it's fantastic. Um, Kat, you are a delight. You are one of my favorite people to be around and the person that inspired me to go to that Pilates class. Oh, yeah. Where I ended up getting a uh, I have like paper thin skin, apparently. Mm -hmm. And I burned the living hell out of the area right over my butt crack. And it looked like I had the world's worst tramp stamp. Just from that one session. Just one session, and really? it looked like someone put a cigar out on my asshole. <laughs> it was just, just oh, a... you can't, you not work. Okay, well, let me just tag you out. I just wanted to say hi and crash. Uh, Kat, where can we and find you? Where can we find you on social media if we want to learn about whiskey or fun things? Um, on Dana's social media. That's not um, true. But uh, you know, like he, he promotes me pretty hard. He sure does. That. Yeah. Sure yeah. <laughs> um, when, uh, when we'd been dating for like maybe three weeks, you know, when I was just like giddy, like, Ooh, I like this guy. He, t he took a picture, like he took a video of himself showering and did like a funny bit and tagged me in it. Like Ooh. <laughs> it, wasn't revealing. I, it wasn't revealing, but it was still intimate. And I'm like, all right, like throwing down. Um, so yeah, you, you can find me there, but, um, well, Cat. good to see you. I wanted, it was, I've never crashed before. Is it a real thing? A it, pod crash? A pod crash? It sure is. Uh, Kat Augustin, and, and I do want to just explain it to you because it is such a thing that uh, was not expected from, from the people listening. You are a, a wonderful comedian. Uh, I, wow. met you, I met you years and years and years ago. Uh, early on uh, in there, I believe you were, you were hosting a show that sure. I that I met you on and 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 then you know comedy people go in whatever directions and then we sort of have reconvened in that uh personal and professional uh friendship when uh That's you funny. And I, didn't, started... I didn't remember meeting you um before in person I know I followed you on Twitter but I didn't remember meeting you before uh Valerie's fourth of July party but I am not a good comedian I am an excellent host and I am indisputably very funny and cool but as far as a comedian goes i'm so glad i met this one because i'm just like oh why try <laughs> i remember i remember, why I re even try i remember meeting you as a host and thinking that yeah. you were fantastic and i love hosting i love people i love comics i love introducing people and hyping them up and i was really disenchanted with stand-up when trump actually got elected i'm like you know what this is let's call a spade a spade. And then, but like my buddy, I had like really supportive friends, like, no, come on. Like we have to like go to open mics. Let's do these shows. So then when I met Dana, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to quit forever because only, uh, only one star per relationship. Okay. I'm, I'm putting you back on. Kat Ogson, thank you. Bye love. Bye. <laughs> Dana, that was... Uh, How many people can tell that was really me? Can I, can I be honest here? Does it a compliment to have somebody be like, he's so good at comedy that it made me want to give up on something that was once my dream? Um, I don't have any value to that uh, because it's the only thing I know how to do. If I wasn't good at it, I'd be a pretty sad excuse for a human being. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you really good at anything else. <laughs> you do a lot of stuff. You, but you are... Here's the, but here's the thing. Um, when I was, uh, th uh, this is, this is, uh, this is true. When, uh, I was the, f still am the fifth child of a litter of six and, uh, all my older, I have, uh, older brothers and a younger sister, and they're all giant athletes. And, and my only th thing was that I was funny. That was my own, I was, I'm physically smaller than that. My nickname was the mailman's kid. Cat doesn't, uh, cat doesn't believe that I'm biologically related to my family. Um, it's just, I have a, there's a photo of me with my family and somebody said, you look like they're hostage. Um, but I see the resemblance, uh, long story longer. When I was 1972, six, five, six, seven years old, 
I had a very, uh, for that age, good impression of the then President Richard Nixon. And my father would call me down when he had friends over to do Richard Nixon. And I was literally five, six, seven years old, standing in front of a group of people that were sitting down, doing an impression, and they would laugh. And that was how I got attention at that. It, that was how I got attention. That was the only way I got attention. That's also at like that giving. Age. And it was just like from that before the age of 10, written onto my hard drive was this is what you do to get attention. Attention is how you survive. So I did, it was, it was, it was like, there's no need for Freud. It's too, <laughs> uh, if you put it in a movie, people would go, it's a little on the nose, uh, to make it a little more. It was just like, pfft, pfft, done. Uh, that's how, I mean, that's how I did it too. That's how I got, it. I mean, I, I, everybody assumes that because of my, stature now that it's all it's always <laughs> been that way and that's not the case i looked like an egg growing up <laughs> like i like i'll really I'll, sh so? I'll show pictures of people i had no there was no angles on my body i was uh -huh. just this just sort of i was a lump of a child uh -huh. um yeah as was i and, and so when you're a lump you you will get no attention from the people around you, except negative attention, you'll get bullied, but you won't be like, I like the lump. So, right, 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 right. So for me, it was like, it was sort of, I couldn't find my attention from my family because they just weren't invested in that. Sure. Like I, I remember, many? uh, just, it, I just had an older brother, but like mm -hmm. my parents were very young. And so right. I remember from like Massachusetts. Yeah. I remember one time I did like a Woody Allen impression. Yikes. And, yeah. uh, just trying it out. And my dad goes, yeah. and I did like a oh, Woody Allen or something like that. Yeah. And my dad just goes, well, why don't you sound like him? And I was like, well, I'm never doing this for the rest of my <laughs> I'm life. I'm impressed that they knew who he was. <laughs> you know? Yeah, fair enough. But like just having that sort of an experience as a kid, I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to look to them for that validation anymore. Mm -hmm. So I went to the kids in cl and I became a class clown, which was awful. Sure. Like an ADHD chubby little vibrating egg that's yeah, just yeah, yeah. interrupting were... everybody. Sure. I used to, you know, because I'm a uh, hundred years older than you. In high, I, I was in high school at the height of the original Saturday Night Live, Steve Martin, the late oh, yeah. '70s. Uh, I was in. I graduated high school in '82, so. Um, and uh, I would go in and and, and perform the episode of SNL <laughs> that had been on that Saturday. And uh, of, of, of the, the things that make me like look at myself objectively is like that I'm friends with people from that era that were star like I am I am friends with Lorraine Newman. I can I talk to her casually on the phone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've had meals together. She's my friend. But I watched her on TV the way people watched the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. It was just like she was so you know i'm friends with paul rubens which to me is yeah that's nuts it's nuts uh you know uh and uh i'll add it you just do it yeah but, but and it's just one of those things you're just like yep i don't know i'll I'll tell you something <laughs> weird and this is something i don't know if i've ever told you this because i've never wanted to make you feel awkward but that is something similar that we share because i used to watch your specials oh yeah as a that's, kid. No, that's i get that sometimes and <laughs> and so like i th i think i made it a point to never tell you oh yeah that i fine. like the the whole like can't you see josh like that and and like no, all no, that i know stuff. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's nine times out of ten that stuff i don't remember anyways like hey that's pretty funny i should do that the, or, or like <laughs> why, the, did I, why did i stop doing that <laughs> i remember uh i think you might have introduced me to the term nymphomaniac uh, uh, when you were only. talking about the perfect woman and she was a nymphomaniac obsessed with Star Trek. And I was like, See, I now that's a joke that I don't remember. I was that, like, I was like, that'd be a great that that's a joke that I don't remember that uh, I can see me making it's, and uh, and think, oh, yeah, I was still the same person. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember it because I was like, OK, I know Star Trek. So and let my me friend marry that woman. <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> I, I was I was like, okay, I know Star Trek. Let me look up the other word. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Because I was probably, geez, that would have been, I'm guessing, like in the early 90s, I think, when you yeah. had those HBO specials. So I was yeah. like probably like 11 or 12. Sure, yeah. And uh, seeing them <laughs> and just being like, yeah. Like, I really got into that. And so, but I've never really wanted to be like, I think f there's that friend and fan divide where it's almost like this sort of different world. Yeah, I have it. I'm like, I, yeah. I, I absolutely, um, you know, uh, Scott Alexander and Larry Karaszewski, who wrote Ed Wood, which is like my favorite, you know, one of my favorite movies. And uh, uh, that I was, and I, you know, knew who they were, read about them, like, I was like, God, these guys are so cool. And, and, and now they are, and they're, now they're friends of mine, but it's still like, and then you forget it. You forget that they wrote Ed Wood because they're just, you know, your friend. And, and then it was like, oh, yeah, that's right. You wrote it. That that was <laughs> one of the ones with like when HBO Max came back. I, I mean, was, they wrote more than Ed Wood. They yeah, wrote the, you know, they Peter wrote a OJ Simpson. They wrote every if there's a biopic that you saw that you were entertained by. Uh, oddly, uh, pro, odds are they wrote it. They nailed that. Shit. Yeah. When HBO yeah. Max came back, I was like, I wonder if those old specials that I hadn't seen in a long time were. And they were. And I watched them. And they're, oh, still, they? great. they're still great. Um. So That's most bad hair, man. over the what do you want to like, how are we going to criticize ourselves for the decades that we grew up in? Because that's going to be yeah, I got a lot. Were, of Yeah, there were some there were some uh, there were some uh, I was trying to describe Kat said, uh, I think it was yesterday. She was like, I would think that going to college in the 80s was mind blowing. And I said, like, it was it was just like going to college in the 90s, except with shoulder pads and a lot of moose so like much moose. every every girl had that flash dance thing and the hair was just crunchy just a, like a nice shell of hair yeah it was a shell of hair and a torn sweatshirt every single one yeah and they all had the same nagel print in their dorm room it is i was having a conversation with somebody not too long ago w about like sort of like when you come up in your generation and like what imprints on you as to like what is cool and how that sort of like shifts and changes over time and all the the what was it now that the like the the millennials and and the new kids like gen z or whatever like they're making fun of the of our genes and it's just like yeah. well this is just what's supposed to happen we're just supposed to get made fun of by the next yeah. generation. Sure. The, 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 the um, Pete Townsend, John Entwistle was complaining about that. He didn't understand rap music, not like the lyrics, but he just didn't understand it as a concept. And, uh, and, and Pete Townsend said, it's not our job to understand it. It's our job to get the f out of the way. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 and I'm, and, and I, uh, th th that's, that will save you a lot of heartache when you just realize like, you know, you can, o you can only be new once and then you, you have your thing and you just, you just keep doing your thing. Um, uh, it's, uh, it it's great to be able to be in the parade and also enjoy the parade. Yeah, it's definitely, there have been stuff, there's like, you know, kinds of new music that have come out over the past several years where I've been like, I'm going to give it a try. And then I'll be like, I don't get it. And that's okay. It's totally yeah, I okay. Get, yeah, I don't need, I, I don't need to get okay. it. Yeah. I have the things I like and the things I like aren't going to disappear. It's sort of like when yeah, they reboot I, it's, something. It's like if you've ever been on Twitter, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, I don't, uh, somebody was, a uh, cat got into a fight on Twitter yesterday because someone, she was saying that she can't wait to travel again cat loves to travel and mm -hmm. see the world and somebody pointed out that traveling was uh, a privilege and culture you know it's like who are you to go to some other culture and i was just like yeah uh that might be a prevalent theory uh i'm just gonna check out yeah okay <laughs> yeah. bye like yeah exactly exactly okay bye that's a great that's the good that and that's that's uh and uh, or just yeah that's the only thing you say is okay bye yeah i have no like i don't know what you want from me in this situation be like oh and man you don't have to you and yeah yeah you don't have to win every fight sometimes if you know i did this uh um i have a very good i have a very good friend 
uh, a very, very, very funny uh, uh, guy named Kevin Fitz, uh, Kevin Fitzgerald. He lives in Denver. He uh, is also a, he's a comedian. He's also a, a veterinarian. He had a show on Animal Planet called Emergency Room Vets. And before he was a veterinarian, he and his brother in the 70s and 80s did security for the Rolling Stones. Uh, he is truly Forrest Gump. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, he pretty was bad, at yeah. Altamont. He was, Ooh. you know, he. Yeah, no, he was doing that he, security. He, he, well, the Hell's Angels did that security. Yeah, they sure he did. Was backstage, he was backstage. Um, no, I mean, and he he is on an episode of my podcast uh, that I literally was in Denver working with him, and we were just talking one night because I knew he was a veterinarian, and I said, like, how how did you become a veterinarian? And he said, Keith Richards made me, and I laughed. And he said, no, really, uh, uh, he, my brother and I did their security, were on their security detail. And, uh, you know, he brought me into his office one day and, and he just said, like, what do you want? You don't want to be banging heads when you're 50. What do you want to do, Kevin? And, and he's like, I don't know. I like animals. All right. Why don't you become a veterinarian? I'll write you a letter. <laughs> and he, but basically, that's what he ended up doing. And then it's like they start telling you crazy and like, OK, this guy's clearly and then the photos come out like oh holy shit. yeah i would love i would <laughs> holy shit. i would love and, that and letter everybody that letter yeah, of right. recommendation like everyone's got their like high school principal's letter of recommendation yeah. he's like yeah. here's uh keith richards he wrote this for me but he but he also like you know during the 70s and 80s he you know he's older than i am he's like and he was like you know he did rolling stones he did you know the the rat pack tour with sinatra and liza Benelli. he did uh Elvis's last tour, like he just, him and his brother were the guys, and 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 they've got the photos to prove it. Yeah, you know, just him with with giant hair and weird shirts, and but he said that one of the things that they would do. This is why I'm telling you the story. One of the things that they would do when if if somebody is like acting up in the front row, like a lot of times at Rolling Stone shows, you get people throwing firecrackers or and like drunk guys throwing firecrackers or stuff like that. He goes, I'm I'm with the band. I have no authority to detain. Uh, I um you know I'm just here to so you know sometimes you go up to people and you're kind of like, hey man, just chill out. Uh, you know, you don't want to, you want to see the show. You don't want to, they would say, you don't want to, you don't want to have breakfast on the County, which is <laughs> yeah, waking up in line. jail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know he's got, you know, these guys are rock and roll guys. Yeah. And he goes, you know, and, and sometimes they'd be cool and sometimes it wouldn't be cool. And they would have these uh, saps. If you know what a sap is, uh, it's a leather uh, stick with a, at the end of it is a metal disc and it's all encased in leather and it would be taped to their forearm and the metal disc was in their hand. Uh, and they go, if somebody was really messed up, you go up to them and you'd ask them a nonsense question. You just go, uh, hey man, is it soup yet? And they would look at you because they're not expecting that question and it throws them off. He goes, I would ask them where they parked. I go, where'd you park? And my brother would say, is it soup yet? And in that second, when they're disoriented, pop them behind the ear with the Oof. sap and then they go down and nine times out of ten they throw up because you throw off their equilibrium and then they could call the cops over and go this guy's drunk get him out oh good move good violent yeah. move but that's how they would do it and so cat and i were in palm springs over the weekend and i'm driving down the street and i want to there's a space to park so i put on my blinker and i stop in front of the space the person behind me isn't paying attention and they they don't give me room they just come right up behind me then they pull out like hey you stopped in the middle of the street i'm trying to... and i'm like and i just said is the tv on to the guy what yeah what is the tv's on weirdo and drove away oh man <laughs> that's, what that's a great like, conflict it's... resolution yeah it's just like i'm not gonna win this argument you're you have your own version of events and I'm, i don't have the time you're not worth the time it would take for me to go no you're supposed to follow me one car length for every 10 mile per hour increment i'm driving which would allow you to see my directional signal and slow down allowing me to pull into the parking space <laughs> you know instead it's like, is the tv on 
when when I was a bouncer, I was a I was a teenage I was a teenage bouncer slash werewolf. Right. I was a slash werewolf. No, I used There's to. There's your movie. Yeah, um, I remember my trick to get people out when they were too drunk is I would start speaking, but I wouldn't say words. I would just start like mouthing words. And then they'd say what? And I'd be like, I can't he hear you. Come here. I can't hear you. And then I'd get them to the uh, door where I could hear them. And I'd be like, you got to go. Uh, oh, and smart. then yeah. and then they would just leave. Uh, and, and I'd be like, hey, man, we want you to come back. Just you can't be here anymore. But we'll see you tomorrow. I'll be I'll be here tomorrow. Come on by. I'll come say hi to me. Uh, and then right. people it, it always worked. And I worked with all these other guys that they just wanted to hit a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big thing. They and I was like, hey, don't don't well, do that. It's like that. Twitter. It's like people just there to fight. Yeah. Hello. Don't tell me how to feel you. So I want to, <laughs> I want to talk about a lot of the things that you have been involved in creatively since, uh, s since, since we, we last spoke on a podcast okay. and sort of since the world, uh, fell into a bit Stop. of a tizzy. Yeah. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about is of course, hanging with Dr. Z, which is a <laughs> yeah. fantastic, uh, web show that you, yes. that you created, um, it is a seventies talk variety, but mo talk show. It's Merv Griffin. Yeah. Um, so tell me, I mean, I know where you got the, I personally am yeah. going to know where you got sure, the sure, idea sure, for this because sure, sure, yeah. I know well, who you are. My, I was worried that my appeal wasn't narrow enough. It's very so. specific. <laughs> yeah. And I'm cool. I'm, uh, I'm cool with that, by the way. Like I don't, I was looking at this thing yesterday. I didn't realize it's Karen Kilgariff. Uh, uh, who I've known since the 80s because we were in San Francisco together. Like, I, do you know how much my favorite murder makes them? Oh, a lot of money. Guess. Uh, I'm going to say it's probably deep six figures. 15 million they yeah. made last year. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's a lot of money. They had a $10 million production deal. And, and, um, I, and my podcast, which uh, has been in its 10th season, I'm almost breaking even. Sure. Almost. You know? <laughs> Just like, wow, I am not in the zeitgeist at all. <laughs> but, but, uh, like hanging with Dr. Z, uh, the, the people who, who like that love it. They and, sure do. And, and the fact of the matter is I'm, I'm not, interested in that bro uh, like the the stuff that the the stuff that interests me enough to actually do something about it is all and always has been obscure and weird and left of center so and i that's... can't really complain and i always use musical analogies like yeah it'd be great to be uh bruce springsteen um i'm x but yeah. still cool to be an ex. <laughs> no, I mean, I think you've made quite a career out of being very honest about who you are and writing towards your your yeah. strengths and the things you love. And um, and just to go over the quick list of hosts, you have Stephen Weber, Tim Meadows, Bobcat Goldthwaite, Paget Brewster, uh, Patton Oswalt, Janet Varney, Andy Richter, and of course, Dana Gould. Yes, had Dana Gould on. That must have been a, a very, very fun uh, way to uh, do the show. Uh, it was very, it was, well, it was, it was interesting. Obviously, uh, it was, it was, uh, I, I play Dr. Z, uh, which it's basically Dr. Z is from Planet of the Apes. If he was Sammy Davis Jr. with the talk <laughs> show in the 70s, it's, uh, it's, and you can see it on YouTube. It's called Hanging with Dr. Z and it's, it's 10 minutes long. And it's, uh, you know, I grew up watching those kind of uh i love that era of show business like the pre-1980 and it's not it's like my the silver era. age this is yeah and i'm not i am not nostalgic for something from my past it's before my time um but i love that 50s 60s 70s polyester you know it's just like yeah. it was just a different era and and what i love about it is it wasn't or at least this angle of it it wasn't snark snarky or shitty if you watch those it's the sammy davis jr it's like you're fabulous no you're fabulous and and everybody had this sort of understanding that we're all it's all cool it was and it was almost like I, everyone was on ecstasy 
Yeah, it really was. And yeah. many of them were. But but when we started doing the show, because we described it to people, it's like, well, it's sort of like between two ferns, but with an orangutan. And uh, and they immediately took that sort of between two ferns the attitude, like on me. And then and we literally stopped it. Like, nope, this isn't working. Um, and 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 I, I did the show with my friend, uh, my friends Rob Cohen and Pete Aronson. The, the, the show was actually Rob's idea. Um, I've been doing Dr. Zayas as a as a goofy show business character. I hosted some benefits as him, and well, you know, you've I, been on Kimmel as him. Yeah, I was on Kimmel. As, yeah, it's a bizarre side career. <laughs> I can't really explain it, but um, again, do what you love, and uh, it's basically. You know, I, I love those old like show business guys that were like, you know, if you've ever been in escrow with Alan Alda, you know what it's like to be in hell. You know, just, <laughs> just like, that kind of like stuff that people would talk about when you were a kid. And so we were doing the first episodes and people had that kind of attitude. Nothing against Zach who's who's brilliant. I, I love him. Um, but it's just a different show. And, and we found it wasn't working. And then Rob said because rob was the one that had the idea of doing it as a talk show rob just and he directed them and he wrote sammy in big letters on a whiteboard and set it right out of my eye line because that's what it is it's it's sammy it's sammy davis jr it's, it's just like you 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 know you know it's like yeah uh and then it clicked instantly and uh and uh it it was just uh it worked it was was uh it's really great and really stupid and and but but i also felt especially after covid and four years of daily harassment by the president of the united states <laughs> <laughs> somebody said he doesn't govern the country he harasses the country which is really true yeah um i i, I just felt that people needed a break of and 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 I'm kind of tired of that. Like there, there's this school of comedy, and and you just saw it with uh, uh, that that guy, the the uh, Austin guy that got in trouble. Oh, last Tony week. Hinchcliffe. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who I didn't. I don't. I'm not. I'm an improv guy. I don't go to the comedy store. But you know, the, the, there is this mentality of like, well, it's not funny, but it's mean. It's the same thing. It's like actually no yeah i'm not i don't it's not but that's a that's a i mean that's a whole school um and what's well, that edgy uh, they, they're like no i'm being edgy get it because i said you know i i yeah I, but no yeah but you're did, not being edgy it's like, yeah because i did the punching down punching up like yeah. don't compare yourself to lenny bruce Le, lenny bruce spoke up for black people not against black people. yeah it's, they're like <laughs> no it's it's edgy because i'm doing a 50s racism yeah and yeah you're like, exactly oh, that's not yeah and uh, to which I would only go, how's that working? Yeah. Um, but 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 it was that sort of like I felt like the, I that people would enjoy a, a, something that was completely apart from that, and just very s positive and s warm and stupid. I mean, it's very much like it's very much in the school of mystery science theater. Yeah, I want to correct you with stupid and replace it with silly because silly, yeah. because that's the vibe that i get from it mm -hmm. but it, you're right it is very it's wholesome it's trippy it's silly it's fun and it there's no damage done yeah exactly during that's the well enjoyment put. and and that yeah, there's is no damage done yeah that's well put it's definitely something that i would 100 percent check out and uh a, a good highlight yeah check it out on youtube fine definitely watch the show give it the links give it the upvotes uh, or up, it's not reddit give it the thumbs up but also uh your instagram for hanging with Dr. Z. Yeah, the hang with Dr. Z Instagram is, is so fun and weird. And yeah, there's one today that was we're, we're quite proud of. The, uh, I, yeah, there's a uh, I saw two of them recently that I was just like, they're very good. They're like these excellent photoshops placing you as Dr. Z into these weird historical footnote yeah. moments. He's Zelig. He's yeah. he's Zelig. He's showbiz Zelig. 
it's it, it's pretty fantastic. And I, I so I definitely would say um, follow that Instagram. I'm going to take a moment real quick. I just want to give a shout out because I have a lot of people that are uh, what we call producers of the show. Um, they give me their names to say uh, in the middle of the oh, show. Great. And then I, you can uh, relate. Uh, you can react to them how you want. I'm going to burn through them um, just a little bit quickly because I have a few of them. But we have uh, first off, I didn't kill my wife. Uh, which is always a strong way to start. And also that's a really good impression. Yeah. I don't care. Uh, we have Adrian, we have Kelly Stanaway. You can't really react to regular people's names, but that's fine. Silius Ruby, Dr. DNA burrito mouth, which I always wonder what's going on with that name, but I respect and appreciate it. Rudy Rueda, Lisa Harden, who's also my co-producer on mint on card. Uh, Huey Taurus Bulba, mind freak five, five, five. Cody Beck, Billy, I stole Cody's last name and there's nothing she can do about it, Beck. At Gavin underscore not, Jessica Robertson, Captain Fat Strong, Gregorio, I'm the law, martial law, and I hate superheroes. Lemming Malloy, Venom, Lethal Protector, number one, a fantastic comic book from my childhood. Uh, Scoundrel, Kimball the Fully Sanctioned Buffoon, The AV Foundry. Andrew doesn't even like sports. I'm so sorry to hear that, Andrew. Uh, do you like sports at all? Do you have any sports you like? I don't dislike them, but I don't follow them. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Lef, Gray Man of the Fireside, Ricky Cilantro, at Nerd Numbers, Mackenzie, Willem Dafoe's Baffling Big Bo Bonanza. Chill. <laughs> Is that restaurant chain still going? <laughs> you know, can, can I tell you what? Don't order the mozzarella sticks. It's not what you think. Uh... Dan he terrified you as a child, and now he's here to feed your family. Hey, what do you say you have a Caesar salad? It's like, oh, you know, I don't want Green Goblin version of him. <laughs> it's like, it was like when he when they cast him as the Green Goblin, I was like, oh, good, that's perfect. And then they put him in a mask. Like, no, no, no. The whole point of Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin is you don't need a mask. Well, the, the, the thing about it is the voice he went with. I was just like, oh. I did not like there's one part where the cops surround him and he goes, hi, surrender. And he delivers it like he's the phantom of the opera at the highest level. And I was just like, this is everything I've ever asked for. Uh, <laughs> Dan Hackroyd, Murph, the Murph. Oh. Show me in the rules where it says a dog can't play basketball. Uh, Russell Richardson's Twitter at Hello Tardis. That's an excellent use of this sponsorship, by the way. This is just plug your own Twitter. I really support yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, Sophia Hapgood, the ghost of Dave Thomas, the adopted ghost of Dave Thomas. He was a big uh, proponent of adoption as he was an adopted guy himself. Ah. Shebrew Sleeps, Norm from Cheers, the actual Norm from Cheers. George Went um, signed up for this. We appreciate him, but he likes to go undercover, but not fully undercover. Vorta Spin, Normal Man Andrew McGuire, Jolly Buckaroo, Dill Havarti, which is my favorite cheese, by the way. JK, Jeff May's biggest fan, Fushizless Jones, David Knife Boot Hinson, Funky J, Saint Gut Free, Instagrams at Bob underscore of underscore skull, Mike Gotts, uh, Big Booty Boy, 42069. <laughs> I hate my fans. No, uh, Logan Rarisich, hi, I'm Super Fudge, and welcome to Fudge Mania. Uh, Jez Butt, Willie Dustis, Grayman of the Fireside, the Ian McClendon, El Seldo, Exploding Runes, Bart Fartigan, Jennifer Fendelander, the most well prepared dead guy, DavyFrancis.com, Mike Gotts, Grumblebee, Cronenberger, Nolan Mayton, Miguel Acuna, these seven Bs, Lemming Malloy, and Kool Aid Molotov. These are all people that are uh, that are producer tiers at the patreon.com slash Jeff May. If you're listening to this on the Patreon, thank you so much. If you're listening to this for free, thanks. I guess, but you can also hear uncensored and uh, sponsored early episodes uh, on the patreon.com slash Jeff may that being said, I am done with that aspect of it. If you, well done. if you did not hear your name, it means I do not have it in my database. You got to get that to me and I'm so sorry. And if you pay the $10 tier and you're, I didn't say your name, hit me up and I'll Venmo you your five bucks back because I am a fair and balanced. No, I don't want to say fair and balanced. Honest broker. I'm an honest bro, mm -hmm. Kerr. An uh, honest broker. Um, uh, so we, we hanging with Doctor Z was great. Uh, you uh, had a great episode of Creep Show that I really oh, got thanks. to enjoy. Uh, it was the um, the the diet plan episode. It made me feel very uncomfortable, which was the goal. 
<laughs> uh, and then I well, I wrote one that just aired. And that, that was the that's great. That was the second thing I was going to ask you is right. you were you you starred in one and then you also wrote on one. What right. it just aired? So um, can you give me for those you should see it? I believe it's on Shutter, correct? Shutter, yeah. Okay, so and it will be it will air on AMC, but later. Um, give me the breakdown without any spoilers of what the theme of the episode is. Sure. Uh, the the well, the episode is you know. Uh, it was it's sort of inspired by the Steve Martin movie Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, where he interacts with old they they put him into old movies. It's kind of like the Dr. Z Instagram where they they put him into and he has scenes with Humphrey Bogart from old movies. They they the Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid is uh, a, a 40s detective story where they use footage from a lot of other detective movies from the 40s uh, to tell the story. So Steve Martin would have scenes with Humphrey Bogart and Sidney Greenstreet and Peter Lorre, and they would backwards engineer the dialogue to make the scene work. And it was directed by Carl Reiner, uh, came out in 82, and it was really brilliant. And uh, I always loved it, thought it was underrated. Uh, and so I wanted to do the, the horror movie version of it. And so uh, in this episode of Creepshow that I wrote, uh, a guy invents uh, sort of a, a, an, an immersive VR where he, uh, you can, you not only can watch your favorite movie, you can go into your favorite movie and live there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's like, you don't just, you know, you know, you're not a fan of uh, whatever your, you know, whatever movie you like the Godfather, you can go and be in the movie. Um, and uh, and uh, oddly, the movie he's obsessed with was Public Domain, where we could use clips for free. Oh, um, what a wonderful so he, coincidence. Yeah. So uh, he goes into this movie, uh, Horror Express, that has Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. And it's a, a, a horror film from the 70s. And um, and his wife, like he just keeps spending more and more time in there. And his wife gets suspicious and finds out that he's having an affair with one of the characters from the movie. So, uh, so she, Christopher uh, Lee, actually. Exactly. So, so as in all of these sort of EC comic stories, it's a, it's a morality tale and he suffers, uh, suffers a gnarly fate because of it in a different movie. Um, uh, it, it also the, the stunningly, uh, and, uh, 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 public domain night of the living dead and so um and, but the great thing was going through both movies horror express and night of the living dead and taking out the scenes that i wanted to put the lead of the story into played by justin long very oh great great he's terrific in it and uh, and sort of again like backwards engineering the dialogue so what he says christopher lee it sounds like him and christopher lee are in a scene together and uh, and Greg Nicotero directed it and did an did an amazing job. Did an amazing Damn, job. that yeah. is a hell of a team. So you wrote Greg Nicotero directed and Justin Long is the star. Yep. Yeah. The, he did a great job. Did you find that sort of having to reverse engineer something was harder or easier or on a par? Harder but more fun. Then okay, it so took a long time to to write because you really have to. You know, it's it's it's, and then when you're writing it, you're like you have to say like you know, Chris Valley, you know, and then time code the movie, oh and, yeah, and 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 specifically say you know Justin is placed here, so we, you know, um, I actually wrote it so that Justin could be green screened into the film, but Greg, they actually rebuilt some sets so they could do camera moves and things like that they they actually uh yeah that seems like greg would do something like that like yeah he he, he's a director i'm not a director I'm, I'm like what's the easiest way out of this problem <laughs> uh uh greg really uh directed the hell out of it and uh it was the season two finale it was one of the few episodes that they did that it's the whole episode they didn't do two they just did one it's great uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm, uh, again, do what you, you know, do what you love. I love horror movies. And so I'm happy to be working in that, uh, uh, <clears throat> happy to be working in that genre. I, I, I do have, I, I have a, a couple of things because I know there's lots of stuff that you love that we talk about. So I want to play a little, a little game with you. Uh, uh -huh. And it's a classic game. Uh, I don't know how classic, but you're familiar with the, uh, the Mary Kill game. 
Yes. Okay. So you are familiar with that. For those of you that poor, are not poor, Mary Kill. I'm going to. <laughs> I, I'm going to give you three. Uh, I'm going to give you three options, and uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the game, you choose to either do one of these three options that I have given you um, to these films uh, or to these options. Excuse me. Uh, so if you're ready to play, I will start with an easier one. I think. So Dana Gould, f Mary Kill. Uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, or Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. So we're gonna do an, an oh, F in, in order. So whichever one. Uh, so F. Which one are you gonna F? Which one are you gonna marry? Which one oh, are you gonna okay. kill? Okay, I would. Well, not surprisingly, I would. Uh, I would uh, uh, kill Episode One. Uh, episode seven, marry episode four. Okay, that seems. I think that would probably be the general consensus with most. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, but, but here's the here's my gripe with anything before a new hope. That was all done after the fact. There's a there's a saying in editing that has gone into life. Cut to the chase. Uh, and what that means is if your story is getting bogged down, get to the exciting point. Yeah. Trade, dis the trade disputes. Yeah. Just cut to the chase. And Star Wars Episode Four starts in the middle of a chase. You don't need to know anything that happened before. I mean, they tell you in the, in the scroll, too. Yeah, it doesn't like, matter. No. Yeah. It just you're right into it. And. Nothing that happened before should uh, should have to matter. I, I like the idea of giving your audience a little credit, um, which I think is becoming oftentimes less and less in storytelling that we need to, like, explain how the science works and everything. Well, and I, you know, it, the thing is, and this is if you, re you know, people will will go bananas and disagree, but I, I can't see how this is not. I can't see how this is not the truth. He said he wanted to make Flash Gordon. He wanted to make a Saturday morning serial. He wanted to do these things that he saw when he was a kid. Um, and and that's exactly what episode four is. It, 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 it sure and, is. And, and then when it became a success, he said, no, 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 it's it's Lord of the Rings. Uh, I, I wrote this 5,000. I wrote 500 movies at first. And <laughs> and the, and and and. Uh, but you never said beforehand it was Lord of the Rings. Th that was that was after. And if it was Lord of the Rings, you wouldn't be remaking the same movie every time. If it was Lord of the Rings, you wouldn't be blowing up the Death Star at the end of every movie. <laughs> you know, it's a uh, uh, it's just baloney, and uh, that's and it's fine. You don't have to be Lord of the Rings. It, it, I would give Tolkien some credit. It might be one of those things of the reason of why I like Empire Strikes Back so much is because Empire Strikes Back really doesn't, it really does sort of look to further the story without having to repeat anything. Yeah. Which then they and sort you of know, we got that back. And, and and you know, I, I again, I would bet my eye teeth that, you know, Lay Brackett and Lawrence Kasdan are saying, it's like, well, we can't blow up the Death Star again. What's good? I don't know. What if you found out that like Darth Vader was Luke's dad? That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah, okay. No, let's do that. <laughs> you know, there's no way that was. I'm sorry. No, if you tell it, no. I th I think uh, you know George Lucas created an amazing world and everything like yeah. that. But I feel like he needed to hire one dude to stick around him to just hit him with the newspaper and tell him no yeah. when it was appropriate. Like there needed to be one court jester available to lucas that wouldn't be like yes because i need to protect yes you know what let's do more political trade well yeah well the, when, when i know somebody that worked at lucasfilm during phantom menace and uh you know everybody knew jar jar was a bad idea and it was and it was like uh should i say something i don't know do you want to come to work tomorrow it was literally yeah. that yeah was like, you sure you yeah. want to do the with the yeah. jamaican People Jama like to work. A Jamaican People alien? Like yeah. 
Yeah. Right. People like a job. All right. Uh, next. Uh, so there you go. The That's ne- that. The next FMK. Uh, f***ing and marrying. Or I, I don't know. The, I guess it's just what is the differential there? Well, one is a lust and one is a thing you want to spend the rest of your life with. Okay. That's all right. That's good. As if marriage is something you do for the rest sure, of your life. Sure. I like I like the. I thought The Force Awakens was 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 a clever remake. Yeah, it was it was it was uh, it was uh, it was definitely yeah. way more reboot than I was hoping for in a sequel. Mm-hmm. I was like, I feel like yeah. feel like we did this. Yeah. Um, but but it was fine. I, I didn't hate it. I enjoyed yeah. it. Uh, but that, that whole second or third trilogy was uh, three horses running in a different direction. <laughs> I will say this. I loved The Last Jedi. And the main reason I loved it is because it was such a middle finger to fan theories because I hate fan theories. Yeah, I'm like, just just watch it. Just watch it. Yeah. Like, why do you have to try to be Sherlock Holmes about the movie? Like, just it's coming out in six months. Just let it come out. Yeah. And so, like, when they they really sort of turned everything upside down and were like, not everything goes the way you have it planned. And and yeah. it was such a well, meta statement on the on that. That's world. why the that's why the Star Trek, the Star Trek next gen movies, blow. because there was like, this is what the fans want. You can't not give them that. Speaking of which, the next round of F- Mary Kill is Star Trek the Motion Picture. Okay. Star Trek Generations. Mm. And Star Trek 2009. Kill Star Trek 2009. I knew you'd say that. Uh, uh, I would, I would F- Star Trek Generations and I would marry Star Trek the Motion Picture. You would. Mm-hmm. Even though the motion picture is a bad movie. Yes. <laughs> I actually watched it. Re- yes, I. But but I'm not. A, but Generations isn't a great movie. Um, it's a it's a movie. It's a very it's a movie, movie movie. It's a very movie movie, and and uh, with, with with William Shatner's digital digitally thinned buttock. Um, <laughs> but uh, Star Trek the Motion Picture, I have fond memories of. You know, obviously. I was in ninth grade when it came out. So I was like, you know, it was kind of like a movie made for me. Um, And although uh, boring as uh, boring as 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 hell uh, and and, and just wrong headed, it it was one of those things. It was one of those things where you you forgot what this show was about. (laughs) You know, you forgot what the show was. I love the uh, I love. In fact, look, I I have this right here. I have this you right have here. with you the the inside the art and visual effects of Star Trek the motion picture. Yeah, right here. Uh, um, I like the idea that uh, it's the, the show was brought back to life on the table by uh, star the success of Star Wars, and they poured a billion dollars into it and got it all wrong. They just re- <laughs> it's very it, you know what it is it's the phantom menace of star yeah. treks and it, it's also so disco it's it's so late 70s disco effects and uh it's a great i think it's a pretty effective f- f- you know you could make a one hour episode of the show it'd be pretty good sure it's not an hour yeah. long uh, which yeah. is like, I guess the problem yeah. is that it is, but yeah. okay. That, so that's good. But and they it's literally didn't have time to edit that down. Uh, <sighs> the, 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 uh, the, you know, the story that the, the, the release date was set. I think it was December 8th, 1979. <clears throat> and they hired this special effects company that was doing a uh, Robert Abel and they were doing commercials and they were going to do, and, literally like half the time had gone and they hadn't produced a usable shot and they had to fire them and then hire like they had to get both of the top special effects guys, Douglas Trumbull, who did 2001 and uh, John Dykstra, who had done Star Wars. And they had to hire them both (laughs) and pay them enough to get them to do it. And have them both working around the clock simultaneously to finish the shots to get the movie done. And literally, they were feeding wet reels into the projector at the premiere in Washington, D.C. Like it was. And Robert Wise has said, like, yeah, I'd, I would have loved to have tested it and 
because I didn't did not have time. Yeah, I mean, oh, well, that's good to know. I also mentioned this because I just know your distaste for the the Star Trek 2009 world and uh, and really yeah, just and wanted that. I have this fight. I tech. I remember. I remember when you had that fight. I was texting her <laughs> things to say to you to, to make off. you angrier. <laughs> And I, got, I remember watching it going like, and I like JJ Abrams. He's a great guy. Um, <laughs> he's a great guy. But it's like the minute the minute Spock is making out with the horse, is like, oh, just throw the character out the window. <laughs> throw him out the window. Doesn't matter. And every and I and this is my complaint with now. Now is my old. Yeah, here I come. Here it comes. <laughs> Her here's just, her feel here's, after here's he someone to, he who wants to physically demonstrate love so she feels love even though if he doesn't get the urge except on that one yeah it's a it's called hours. yeah it's no, every seven years <laughs> you can't gotta go to the, some planet with some ritual see some now for the for those of you listening if you're ever asked what is somebody who doesn't understand pon far or the blood fever of plot what do they sound like that's just play them that clip. Dana, I would say that's most people. <laughs> I would say it's most people that don't understand but what, that. But, but what I what drove me crazy about that, and it's not just Star Trek, it's 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 the it's it's my it's my one gripe about the otherwise really terrific Daniel Craig Bond movies, is that everything has to be personal. It's like, no, 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 no. James, no, no, no. The Enterprise was built in his backyard. Like J- J- William James T. Kirk was was the enterprise he watched it get built and he was he was conceived on it and his father you know it's like everything is per- and like james no james bond and blofeld they were they were in the same preschool this is this is a battle that goes back to childhood it's like not everything has to be an o- personal origin story. i mean i i will say this though about that which i think might you might not be taking into consideration is the fact that he's an army brat so he's on the base or he's a Navy sure. brat, so he's on the base. And he's watching the thing get built that essentially killed his dad. So, like, in a way, I totally understand that part of it. Like, that's not something that I necessarily would jump towards. I just love how much you hate it and had to bring up the <gasps> rancor, and it paid could, off. Could anything could anything randomly happen in any of these stories? You know, <laughs> could something random happen? Could could Blofeld just be a guy that you were assigned to? <laughs> it's fair. All right. Next, f- Mary Kill is Godzilla 1954, Godzilla 1998, and Godzilla 2014. Um, this might uh, be the easiest one, I think, yeah, for you. Um, uh, kill uh, 98, uh, f- 18, and Mary 54. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're going to, we're gonna, that, that sounds fair. It's a very sexy yeah. and curvy Godzilla in 2014. So I can understand why you'd go for it. I don't, yeah, I Godzilla. don't like the new, I, I'm not a, I, I, I love the, uh, the, the, the 54 design. That's actually my favorite design of, of, uh, Godzilla. It's so, it really does look like this thing that was mutated by nuclear ra- like it's it's it was a dinosaur but it's been mutated and it's cra- g- g- weird and and looks like it's part rock and uh yeah it just looks it looks great it, yeah. it, it looks so wrong uh it's it's great and uh and the other the, the, the new one it just looks like a giant crocodile The uh, I will uh, one of the best sort of descriptions of the Godzilla versus Kong, which I actually liked a lot. And I thought it was really it went I did. It went so overboard that I absolutely bought in. It's Um, not like the original was great. (laughs) The original is is great in its own way, but it is every bit as crazy off the rails as this new one. Yes. Like, how could they do that? You know, why didn't they just go back to him sleeping because he drank berry juice? I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's a very uh, it's a very interesting thing. And I remember uh, I love the and I love uh, the original. I I I love all of those Toho late 60s. Oh, that's that's early 60s. But Toho had this look in the 60s. There's something really beautiful 
about just their sky cycloramas. And that it just was this, it was just, and I watched them all as a kid. It was just this magical world that I wanted to live in. And it is War the Gargantuas has it, Star, uh, King Kong versus Godzilla has it, Monster Zero has it. There's just something painterly and, and beautiful about the world. And another movie that was filmed at Toho with a lot of Toho contract players falls into that category too. You only live twice. There, it always comes back to Bond. Uh, yeah, she- I, uh, I I would say uh, t- uh, Tom Ryman, who's the co-host of Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, had the best sort of explanation of the beginning of Godzilla vs. Kong, where he said the first hour of Godzilla vs. Kong has extreme trying to get your drunk 220 pound friend into an Uber before he starts a fight with the bouncer energy. <laughs> and it was the best, the absolute best way to describe that, where they're just yeah. trying to get his ass to like to, to the mm-hmm. center of the earth space. Yeah. While Godzilla is trying to fuck him up, and it's just yeah, so was, great. There was a, there was Slate has a Slate has a a podcast called Spoilers, which is a movie review podcast, and and they like did a deep dive and like Cal like the people that must have been killed, and then they did, and they blow past it, and I was like, you don't, you should review the movie you're watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there's a lot to go on there next one is going to be uh planet of the apes 1968 planet oh, yeah, of the apes 2001 me. or rise of the planet of the apes from 2011 uh well this is easy i, uh, I have a feeling i know which ones you're gonna do too kill 2001 kill 2001 and kill 2001 um, hey hey uh, we got a bunch of apes out here all right yeah, so how do your mother uh and then uh Oh, I would uh, f- rise and I would marry the original. That's I, I would I expected that. I yeah. um plan the amazing the- thing about the original is it was really, I mean, it, it was, it was just a studio. There's a there's a book called the Studio that was written by John Gregory Dunn, who was married to uh, Joan Didion. And it's about Fox in 1966. And he just followed around Dick Zanuck in 1966. And the the entire focus of Fox in that year was this movie that they had poured so much money in called Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> And Planet of the Apes is just this other thing they were making. And it's, uh, and it was just thrown together. Like the movie started shooting, I think in late May. They didn't, they were still experimenting with the makeup in April. <laughs> just kind of like winging it. Is it. Yeah, no, they, it just literally, it just kind of fell together after and what I love is just in terms of somebody who's pretty DIY, you know, everyone told him no six times. Everyone yeah. in town told Arthur Jacobs no six times, and he just refused to take no for an answer. And I admire that a lot. And and then, yeah, it just kind of fell together. And uh, and uh, it was just one of those things where everything, it was, just, it was like a three-point shot. It was just like, it just happened. Everything just happened to work. It is fascinating to me that the Planet of the Apes, co- like the makeup, seems to have somehow transcended time where if somebody like, for example, you're doing the, the Dr. Z thing or whatever, the makeup you're doing is like the exact same. It is. But and everybody gets it. Everybody accepts it. This is just what the yep. apes look like. Yeah, they look nothing like it. And it's it's just this fascinating cult like That's aspect of the cultural zeitgeist where we've allowed everything else to evolve. But if you're doing Planet of the if they made a Planet of the Apes movie with that exact makeup right now, if we would fine. accept it. Yeah, people would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really it's really true. The only thing different, uh the only thing different with Dr. Z is the glue. Everything else is exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's- and that's the only way that, and that's the only way that joke works. 
because I've had people say, hey, could you do this thing? And you just like get a mask or something. Nope, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. It has to be exactly what you think it is. It has to be so good. You don't question it for the joke to work. It has to be. Otherwise, it's an impression of a joke. It has to be the 1966 Dr. Zayas poured it into this different world. Yeah. And if it doesn't look exactly like Dr. Zayas to the point that you believe it and dismiss it, the joke won't work because then you're hung up on what it looks like. Yeah. Final. Uh, ver- but the, uh, but the, and the only thing that there's two things that date that movie is uh, Lucius, the hippie ape. And uh, the attitude towards women is pretty prehistoric. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah. but very, very, uh, very ape like in his. I was watching, I was thinking about you the other day. Mad Men of the Apes, in terms Can, of it. Holy, uh, shit. In terms of it. you have no idea what you just did because <laughs> I was about to say, I was thinking about you because I've been watching Mad Men. Oh, funny, <laughs> and funny. there's a whole episode where yeah, he takes his episode, son yeah. to watch Planet of the Apes. Yeah, it's true. And about how it's this sort of transcendent moment between a father and a son. Yep. And a father that... that when he says of, that to the... When his son says a thing to the usher, I guess people uh, do something when they're sad because it's right after the death of Martin Luther King. Correct. Yeah. Um, and, and I was thinking of you and I was like, I can only imagine because I... I don't didn't really have like Star Wars for me was something I watched on VHS. I did not see it in the theater. Oh, wow. You know, like it's it's just I'm I was too young. I was when Return of the Jedi came out, I was two. So it's not wow. really, you know, it's not really yeah, like no, I, I that was like I didn't I was I was I was not born yet. I was born in 64, but in, in August. So like I didn't really ex- see the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, but I was 12 or 13. Uh, I was probably tw- uh, 12 uh, and saw Star Wars in the theater. And and I can tell you the mo- the opening shot of the Imperial Star Destroyer coming over your head. Mm-hmm. No one had ever seen anything like that. Yeah, the- it was truly it was a trance. It was like close the door on something and open the door on something else. No one had seen anything like that in a movie. It was jaw dropping. It it was very interesting to me when I was hosting a panel with Sam Jones to discuss how um Flash Gordon is mm-hmm. the direction ah, is I is have to do that every time you say his name. That's the the specific direction that sci-fi was going before Star Wars intercepted mm-hmm. it. Yeah, and so th- there's a divergent timeline yeah, of Flash science Gordon fiction. Is very, is very much in the Logan's Run camp and star wars kind of came down the came in the middle like there's a divergent timeline of science fiction that happens in 1977 where there's star wars where it becomes this high effect opera and then the uh the sort of flash gordon continuing like battlestar galactica kind of Mm -hmm. sci-fi that's disc it's also disco yeah disco fiction but it's it's the difference between like the movies and the theater whereas like flash gordon seems like a play that you're watching and it's yeah well the other thing is that that and again it was very much the the 70s the 60s and the 70s that science fiction was very it was all dystopia and planet of the apes being the perfect example of like logan's run planet of the apes the omega man everything the world is over mankind has destroyed himself that was always the given and then you would go from there they nailed it yeah you know, yeah and star wars the was the first one in a long time that went nah we're not doing that we're doing this yeah. it's great it's this different thing and that was actually the, the 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 thing about star trek in the middle of all of that was star trek was hopeful it's yeah, Star Trek said, no, we work our shit out. We do OK. But everything else was dystopia. I think I've seen more documentaries about Star Trek than I've seen Star Trek movies. The, f- <laughs> the first two seasons of the original show are pretty amazing. Well, it's a Twilight Zone. Yeah. You know, it's the it's third just season. It's a little spotty. Yeah, it's a little Scotty. The third, the, <laughs> or the third season yeah. of the yeah the third season of star trek is like the fourth season of the twilight zone when they went to an hour and it didn't work that that, that that's it. i'm going to do my last uh fmk i know we got to get you out of here soon so i'm going to give uh the last one uh and this is uh okay so f- mary kill the planet of the apes franchise the godzilla franchise or the star trek franchise Oh, I don't want to kill any of them. I know. I them That's all. why I'm giving you these <laughs> options. You have to make the choice. This is your okay. 
Well, then I would have to kill the Star Trek franchise because it's been, uh, you know, my personal presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, personal personal choice because I don't like where it's gone. I think it's been dilu diluted. Uh, I would uh, I would the Godzilla franchise and I would uh, marry the Apes franchise. I've always personal preference. I, I I don't want this to go into effect. I would. But there's just too many. There's too many insurrections <laughs> and uh, and uh, uh, the uh, into darkness and uh, I don't even I don't even remember the other uh, the other start. There's there were two bad next gen films. First Contact yeah. is okay. There's Generations First Contact. Then there's another one, and then Insurrections, right? I just... you know I forget what what's the one with Tom Hardy where he plays That's Baby Picard? Yeah, I think. That's uh that was an interesting way to meet Tom Hardy. Yeah, was there one Picard. between Insurrection and First Contact? Um, I or often... one after Insurrection. Um, I don't necessarily know. I am uh so we have uh let's see there's uh Star Trek the Next Generation uh movies uh blah 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 I'm yeah. looking it up and I don't know. Uh but I can find that information out for you. We have Generations First Contact Insurrection and Nemesis. Nemesis. See, so forgettable. Nemesis was 2002. Yeah. Um and it's I, just like it's just like again there was uh it's hard to. It's kind of, you know, it's like a Pierce Brosnan Bond movie. It yeah. looks like it. You're like, it looks like it. It looks a like very it. good looking situation that I don't need to relive. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a very good uh, a, a joke that I think was very good that I did in 2014, which is I like my Godzilla franchise like I like my sex with a Japanese man in a rubber suit. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you, have you seen any of the um, the three new Star Trek um, opportunity? Because there's Discovery, which is sort of like we're doing a new thing. Here it goes. Yeah, I try. I tried to watch Discovery. I I gave it a first season, and I just like enough. I quit. And then Picard. Yeah, I like Picard. I, okay. I watched all of Picard. That that I was seems kind of like raged at the end. I didn't like the. I didn't like. I don't like death as a cheat. Like if you, yeah. if you can't die, I'm not there yet. The... So uh, don't spoil yeah. that for me. Okay. Uh, I, uh, and, and then um, lower that. I like Picard. I like Picard. Have you and seen? I, I tried to give Discovery a shot, and yeah. it was just too much gobbledygook. Have you seen Lower Decks? No. That's one good? that I'm hearing really great things about. Really? Uh, that everybody I know that's seen it says that it's you know because it's comedy in the right. Star Trek universe, which Star Trek has always been precious about that. Yeah, I think that yeah. it's it's a little too like of I don't its own like the style of the animation, but I'll give the show a shot. It does. I mean, I'm fine. I'll give it I, a you shot. know, it's yeah. as a writer, I think at some point in time, you can probably get past that. Right. Um, so that being said, I know that uh, we have to get going soon. I know you are. Yeah, I get uh, 10 more. I have 10. You have. Uh, well, OK, well, well, then uh, what would you rather have? <laughs> I had a weird <laughs> I had a weird question. And I just because I didn't know the uh, like certain finances of things. Uh, would you rather have the residuals from your appearance in the movie Father's Day or your episode <laughs> of Seinfeld? Oh, the oh, the latter sure <laughs> See, I was like I don't know about the like the movie versus TV it depends on what the situation is or, yeah there's a big difference uh but I was like it's it's it, a big difference there's a big difference so I did I, I picked what I thought was your biggest uh solo TV appearance of which you have many by the way uh, yeah uh, I have a lot in the 90s I did everything you did everything you I yeah, mean there were yeah. I saw you on an episode of the nanny and I was like oh, nanny, was on the I nanny. was on Ellen I was on Ellen's sitcom Yes, I was on Roseanne. Was she throwing was coffee Jane. mugs at everybody on the sitcom, or was that? Oh, I wait know. Till the... I I knew. I see. I knew her as a stand-up. Like yeah. I was. I middled for her in like '86. So I was always like, I'm in that. I'm in that. She was always nice to me. Thing. <laughs> yeah, where you're like looking around, and yeah. I always get that. Like um, I've had that conversation with people. Like they've all they, like they were always nice to me. I'm like, well, I know people that have done crimes that have never done crimes to me. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't mean sure. I didn't do a crime. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I was on. I, yeah, I did. Uh, I did. Uh, good Lord, I did everything. OK, so now here I have another question for you. I, I, I created some games because I didn't want to go solo, just interview with you because I know we did an interview before. So I was going to say over under 100 
So I'm going to do an over under of 100 copies of Gex that you've had to sign. Over. Oh, really? Over. I, I, I And, I, you know, that was just a thing I did with Rob Cohen. Mm -hmm. who I did Dr. Z with and, and a billion other things. Texted him this morning. Gexted um, him this morning. Yes. And it's just we wrote the jokes and, you know, and, and I did the voice and uh, we worked with crystal dynamics. They were really great to me. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm not a gamer. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so last week, uh, Kat's brother was visiting from uh, Chicago and he's in his late twenties. And I'm, uh, he, he, uh, there's two things that I'm a part of that are seminal for him, which is one, I'm in the movie Mystery Men. You sure are. Which apparently has a giant cult following that I am unaware of. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting at a restaurant. It was one of the first times we've been in a restaurant since the pandemic. We're at El Coyote on Ooh, Beverly, on where Beverly. Sharon Tate had her last meal. And, he just looks at me and he goes, Gex. Like he just couldn't get over it. You're like, thanks. And I texted Rob and told him the story. And he just said, uh, uh, Gex has a, a power that you and I will never comprehend. <laughs> it's really true. Do Has there ever been an idea to sort of uh, reboot or sequelize Gex? To, for... I'm sure there is. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure there's a legal reason it's not. I'm sure there's something to do with I'm I'm imagining Crystal Dynamics is no longer a company. And um, but yeah. I'll, you know, we'll maybe you could get the rights up. back real cheap. <laughs> it could be fun, though. Well, I'm sure. Well, Eddie Gorodetsky, uh who's a buddy of mine, a uh, really brilliant writer and uh, guy had the observation that you know it was the, the 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 baby boom and and gen x lived their sort of fantasy world through music and after gen x the fantasy world lived it through gaming the gaming supplanted music as the place where you put your id yeah, I think I'd say I get that. I could see that and, as it's a little uh, yeah, more interactive. Because like music is as important to me as gaming is to other people. Gaming and is so like meeting Gex would be like meeting John Entwistle to me. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like, holy shit, I you're in my ears. I would my find entire it, childhood. I would find it similar to um fiction as well, like uh like reading. Because yeah. I think that, you know, it's an interactive form of reading in a way that you're you're yeah, you're well, living a storyline and that you're having that. So, yeah, I do like that. Yeah. You were squeegee man in Mystery Men. I was. Um, which is very, very I fun. Uh, it's so it, it is one of those. That's where I met. Uh, that's where I became friends with Paul Rubens. I guess that makes sense. Right. Uh, there was a, I'm assuming you were friends Couldn't with be Ben. Be a nicer guy. Uh, you were friends with um I'm yeah, assuming I was ben, I was ben, ben and Janine. Janine. I'm, yeah. I mean Janine, I've been friends with since college, and and no, we were all on the Ben Stiller, ben Stiller show, show. In 1992. See, that's what I was going to ask you about because I know right. you were on the Ben Stiller show as well. Right. Yeah. Um, no, we all go back to that. Uh, which which is, is very. We fun. will all be in the oral history of Andy Dick when that book is printed. Oh. <laughs> you don't want to know the oral history of Andy Dick. That's, yeah, uh, boy, you really don't. <laughs> or the uh, anal history of Andy Dick. For it that is. Matter. For those of you that are not in the know, every comedian in Los Angeles has an Andy Dick story and, and they're not good. Their Andy Dick story is not good. Yeah. It's always like, oh, he groped me here. Uh, that's, a, that's a good joke. There's a, there's a, they did a, they did an oral history of who is the most famous oral history? Edie Sedgwick, I guess. I guess. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I would assume. Yeah. yeah. Or the, st or the Andy Street Fighter movie. One of those yeah. two. Yeah. And they're doing an anal history of Andy Dick. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, we there. Yeah, there's so much uh, you've you've been a part of a lot of things that I really loved, including of all things. And I didn't know this until I was doing further research. Um, you were on the the clerks animated the the ill fated clerks animated <laughs> yeah. series as a as a customer. Uh, on yep. one of the things. And that must have been really fun. And of course, I, I would you say know, that I love all those guys. Those guys. Again, it's just like. Oh, yeah, you 
you didn't get picked for you didn't get picked for baseball same way I didn't. <laughs> fair, that is fair. And then uh, of course the the last thing would be the Simpsons. And, and the following I yeah. was going to ask is, have you signed more Simpsons or Gex uh, paraphernalia Boy, that that would over the long? There was this weird thing. I was, the answer is probably just mass. There was a period of time where I would fly in. You know, I'd go on the road on the weekend. I'd come in on Sunday usually. And I don't know how this happened, but I would get out of the airport and there would be people waiting for me that knew my name and they had a stack of Simpsons pictures and they would ask me to sign them. They knew I was coming in on, I, I, I don't know. And they were just, you know, and then, and these are all on eBay now, you know, um, I'm and a... they would have a stack of like, Hey, Dana, could you sign these? And I was like, sure. You drove down to the airport. But I, I, it boggles my mind how they knew I was there. I wonder and if there's like autograph scouts that are like at LAX and they'll be like, Dana Gould just got on a flight to Portland. I have no idea. I don't, cause I don't, you know, I don't know. And I don't think I'm that, I, uh, it's flattering that I'm that famous. Um, uh, but then when I go on the road, there's like one or two gecks a week. And so, like, I think long term, it might, you know, the the Simpsons thing was all at once, uh, but the Gex has a really Gex is weird just the little engine life. that could, man. He's yeah, not giving it really up. is. It just doesn't stop. Which is the reminder, I think, too, that like, you know, like you were saying with the Doctor Zayas thing, where it's like it's not for everybody, but for who it is, yeah. it really yeah, is for them. And I feel yeah. like the Gex is the thing of that. And it's funny because I remember when I first shared. I think I, maybe I shared a yeah. photo of us, you know, doing stand up or what? whatever. Uh, but uh, w- the um, people would be like, Gex. And I'd be like, Re- really? Yeah. Gex that, no, it's true. Thing? It's true. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Uh, well, Dana, what uh, we can find you, of course, on social media, I believe, at Dana Gould, uh, which or is at, or at Hanging with Dr. Z. If you're a fan. and and <laughs> at Hanging with Dr. Z. Yeah. Um, what else can we look forward to? What should we do if we want to see Creep Show? We go to Shutter. Uh, um, yeah, creep show is on creep show is on shutter and uh hanging with dr z is on youtube i'm still i'm getting ready to when you know i'm I'm doing shows here in uh, my podcast the dana gould hour uh, never an hour and <laughs> never an hour and one a month um and uh, uh but that's very entertaining people like it and uh you know, I'm writing a movie. I don't know if it's going to get made, but I'm getting paid to write it. And uh, Hell yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm just uh, trying to find new and interesting ways to stay relevant. I would like to add, uh, for those of you listening, to check out Stand Against Evil, which is on Hulu, um, which was such a fantastic show. And I am yeah, really Stand bummed. Against Evil on Hulu. And also, I think you can still stream it, uh, Toys of Terror, which is a funny uh, murderous toys movie nice. I wrote that was on sci-fi at christmas stand against evil uh shows up on uh sometimes i'm f-ing around on peacock and the really? i have an if i'm uh, not peacock excuse me uh pluto the pluto app and they oh, have an okay. ifc channel and stan oh, okay. runs on there and i i give you my eyes on the pluto app uh oh thank I you watch, i didn't always, even know that was a thing it's a nice comfort show for me i love it comedy and horror mixed together There's, yeah it's nice it's i'm very proud of that show it worked it worked better than it had a right to and i attribute that to an amazing cast it's the chocolate and peanut butter of tv it's it's take two great Perfect. tastes yeah. you put them together and it's great uh for yeah those... and it was and it knew what it was and had no pretensions to yeah. be anything other than what it was very much uh, uh very much uh uh more more batman 66 than Buffy it's, the it's so player. much fun it's so, it's yeah. such a blast i really enjoy it uh for those of you listening to this that somehow don't follow me on social media you can follow me on social media at hey there jeff Rowe. you can check out my other shows tom and jeff watch batman on the gamefully unemployed network as well as you don't even like sports a sports podcast for people who don't <laughs> like sports uh and, and unpopular opinion those are both on the unpops network dana thanks again for taking the time out to talk to thank me thank you very much i you, super appreciate it you are a goddamn blast to talk to and i can't wait to see you again soon let's go to a see place you. where I'll sharon tate Pilates didn't get murdered uh and we'll, we'll leave it a place <laughs> that doesn't uh isn't the portent of the death of a hollywood exactly. uh, the darling and we'll grab something uh thank you all uh for listening and don't forget to check it out at patreon.com slash jeff may if you're listening to this for free if not just do whatever i don't care do yeah. what i'm not your parents uh yeah, exactly. you. all right your mom. bye Hey everyone, 
Our artwork is created by Justin T. Brown, who can be found at Artness by Justin Brown on Instagram, as well as artnessbyjustinbrown.com. That dope music you heard is by Troy Nababon, available at Troy Nababon on Instagram, as well as at troynababon.com. Nababon is spelled N-A-B-A-B. 